This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, April 10th, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to Christianity Today, the number of Americans who read scripture at least four times a week and believe that it is the inspired word of God has fallen to just around one in five, according to new research from the American Bible Society. The same percentage of Americans, 19%, are now antagonistic toward the Bible, reading it less than once per month and believing it is a book of teachings written by men that contain stories and advice. Thus, the percentage of scripture haters now equals scripture lovers, notes the press release for the 2014 edition of ABS's annual State of the Bible report conducted by Barna Group. The main reason are millennials. ABS previously proclaimed in 2013 that the Bible had gained 6 million new antagonists. This year, it writes that since 2011, antagonism toward the Bible has risen from 10% to 19% of those surveyed. During the same period, the percentage considered Bible-friendly dropped from 45% to 37%, while Bible-engaged remained steady. The percentage of those considered neutral toward the Bible, 26% in 2014, has remained statistically unchanged. Second today, according to the Detroit Free Press, a body pulled from an Indiana lake has been identified as a Michigan doctor who has been missing since December. Kalamazoo County Sheriff Richard Fuller said on Wednesday in a news conference, Dr. Talika Patrick of Kalamazoo, Michigan, a first-year resident at Western Michigan University's medical school, appears to have drowned. Investigators found no signs of trauma or foul play on the body, and the official cause and manner of death are pending toxicology reports. Patrick was last seen on December 5th leaving the parking lot of Burgess Medical Center in Kalamazoo, where she was a first-year resident in psychiatry working with mentally ill patients, including children. A 1997 Lexus ES300 belonging to Patrick was found abandoned a few hours later with a flat tire in a ditch along Interstate 94 in northwestern Indiana, about 100 miles southwest of Kalamazoo. Talika Patrick's family said in a statement on Facebook that Talika's death is not the ending we had hoped for, Talika had a passion and zest for life, and no matter the circumstances that led up to her death, we are certain that she would not have taken her own life. Many questions remain, but what is certain is that we will love her forever, and her legacy will continue to live on in the love we show to others. Unless additional information on Patrick's death is revealed, her case, according to Fuller, is now closed. Third today, according to the Baptist Press, escalating support for same-sex marriage from the American people and their court system is part of a new wave of challenges for Christians, the Southern Baptist Convention's lead ethicist says. A revolution surrounding sexuality and marriage is happening across America, creating new and challenging questions for Christians and churches, according to Russell D. Moore, president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission. He noted that the Bible presents marriage as an unchanging picture of the gospel through the union of one man and one woman. Our desire, he said, at the ERLC is to equip faithful Christians on the importance of looking to Scripture, not the ever-changing culture, as our guide. The ERLC announced on Monday, April 7th, a national conference to help with that goal. The event titled The Gospel, Homosexuality, and the Future of Marriage will be held October 27th through the 29th in Nashville. Fourth today, according to Charisma News, a federal court Tuesday ordered the University of North Carolina at Wilmington to promote a professor to the rank of full professor, a position it originally denied him, and to pay him $50,000 in back pay. In March, a jury found that university officials had retaliated against criminology professor Mike Adams for expressing conservative views in his opinion columns, books, and speeches when those officials denied him a promotion in 2006. Alliance Defending Freedom Litigation Staff Counsel Travis Barham said that as the marketplace of ideas, universities must respect the freedom of professors to express their points of view. The jury last month found that disagreeing with an accomplished professor's religious and political views is no grounds for denying him a promotion. The court's order writes the wrong done to Dr. Adams by granting him the full professorship he has long deserved. Fifth today, according to USA Today, a hit-and-run driver sent another vehicle crashing into a daycare center in Orlando, Florida on Wednesday. 
killing one child and injuring 11 others. Three adults were also hurt. Authorities were seeking a 28-year-old ex-convict linked to the SUV that caused the crash. The Florida Highway Patrol said Robert Alex Corchado rented a car after the crash and drove away. The Highway Patrol described Corchado as dangerous. He served time for cocaine trafficking and is out on bail for December charges involving drugs and hit and run. Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children reported on Wednesday evening that a young girl had died. Her name and age were not immediately released. Another patient was listed in critical condition and five others were listed in serious condition. More than 50 children and adults were inside the facility at the time of the crash. Six today, according to RT News, the United States Air Force Commander-in-Chief of the NATO Alliance's military presence in Europe said on Wednesday this week that U.S. troops may soon be deployed to the region as tensions continue to worsen near the border between Ukraine and Russia. In an interview with the Associated Press, U.S. Air Force General Philip Breedlove said that forthcoming plans intended to ensure stability in Europe for the NATO partners in the area could involve the mobilizing of American troops. Representatives from the 28 countries involved in the multinational organization have asked Breedlove, a four-star general who has since last year served as the supreme allied commander of NATO's European operations, to have a plan ready by early next week according to the AP's John Thor Dahlberg, to assure partners in the region that other alliance countries have their back. Breedlove told the Newswire that he has every intention of unveiling his proposal ahead of next Tuesday's deadline and that he would not write off involvement by any nation to include the United States. Seven today, according to EFE, the Italian Navy picked up 1,574 migrants, including women and children, who had set sail from the North African coast and were trying to make it to Sicily. Interior Minister Angelino Alfano told Rai News that among the immigrants on board there could be at least one death. Alfano expressed his concern over the massive arrival of immigrants in Sicily and said that in the past 48 hours the Navy has rescued more than 4,000 illegal migrants. Eighth today, according to USA Today, a male sophomore described as really shy went on a slashing and stabbing rampage on Wednesday with two kitchen knives at a high school in Murraysville, Pennsylvania, injuring at least 20 students and a security guard before he was subdued and handcuffed. At least 12 people were hospitalized with serious injuries, many with deep puncture wounds to the abdomen. Doctors said a 17-year-old male student was in critical condition after being stabbed in his liver diaphragm and major blood vessels, but that the blade missed his heart and aorta. A second student is also in critical condition, according to Murraysville Police Chief Thomas Seafield. A security guard was stabbed in the stomach during the ordeal, but was treated and released from the hospital. The suspect was identified in court documents as Alex Rebal. He was charged as an adult with four counts of attempted homicide and 21 counts of aggravated assault. Police know of no motive for the rampage, did not know about the student, and had no warning of the attack. Nine today, according to Jerusalem Post, the president of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, expressed on Thursday his willingness to extend peace talks with Israel past the end of April on the basis that the fundamentals bring to the founding of a Palestinian state whose capital is East Jerusalem. In an interview with the London-based newspaper Ashwar al-Aswat, Abbas said that his application to join 15 international bodies and treaties was in the interest of the Palestinian people and had nothing to do with Israel. Abbas added that he updated the Arab League foreign ministers about recent developments in the peace talks on Wednesday in Cairo. Tenth and finally today, according to Reuters, at least 21 people, including women and children, were killed by twin car bombs in the central Syrian city of Homs on Wednesday a monitoring group and state media has reported. The explosions went off in Karam al Law's area of Homs, the British-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, and the death toll was expected to rise because over 100 people were wounded, some of them seriously. Syrian state news agency SANA put the death toll at 25, saying it included women and children. It said 107 people were wounded, including one of the agency's photographers. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. 
As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Romans 5, 6 through 8 says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.